Welcome everyone, today we have a new charge build for the Barbarians for Season 3. Now looking behind me, I have adjusted my charge build to implement bleeding into the charge build. And it is fantastic, and I'm sure you guys were thinking about using the legendary uniques as unique for the bleeding rains, and it works perfectly for the charge Barbarians. Again, we're back to test tier 100, and again things are melting super fast. So what I want to do is, I want to show you guys briefly of how we clear things super fast very still because this time we also apply bleeding damage due to rent and also with charge. After that, I'll show you guys a short summary of fighting the rule and also how powerful the build can be and what are the plus and also negatives for the build. So fast forwarding a little bit into more fights for tier 100. Now after trying the charge build, and uh, I am planning to make even more variations for different charge build I'm planning to make a charge hotter build as well. So charge bleeding has a few, you know, special perks. Simply because we'll be dealing more damage with charge with damage over time. And our method of dealing damage is changed into both bleeding and also direct damage with charge and also explosion. Which allows us to still one shot everything in tier 100. <laughs> I think that is the biggest highlight. If you haven't seen our previous charge build, we also have a pure charge build. So this is the variation should you feel that you want some you know fun with the legendary unique and should you feel like you want the adjustment to try the new unique rate. The charge build itself is very powerful and we will be able to reduce our cooldowns, deals tons of damage AoE, and we don't really have any problem with you know mobility, survivability, and in terms of map clearing. And I do believe charge build could be one of the best gunner build for season three. And I'll be testing all the build for you guys once the season three gunner comes out. Now, same as before, fast forward into the traps room. So here, what I wanted to show you guys is the monsters will actually get bleeding debuff as I smack them. So notice that some of the monsters don't die in one hit, but they'll be dying in a few seconds. And this is quite interesting because within two seconds of them taking damage from charge, they become explosive bombs for other monsters, which allows you to have a delayed explosion with your bleeding effect and also with charge, which is actually quite fun. Now, similar to the previous build, you do want to group enemies together as you charge them, and you pretty much have so much fun in tier 100, simply because you're charging and they're dying super fast. Now, coming over to a test fight for Doriel. So usually before I summon Doriel, I actually change my build as setup. You can see that previously I was using Protect, and I'll be replacing this one with Flash of Adrenaline. And here I'm also using Tempest. I took Tempest out to do some testing without the pet doing too much damage. So what I wanted to show you guys here is, yes, I want to remind you guys I'm changing my glyphs and also my pet, not my glyphs, I'm changing my pet gems before I fight the boss. And this will allow me to have the highest single target damage potential. And we do have a variation change for the rings to do even more damage single target. Because our build excels greatly, even like exponentially into multiple enemies as we bleed, as we charge into them, we want to have a small adjustment against the boss in terms of single target damage. And just briefly show you guys over here. I didn't get the best rotation, and you can see the potential of charge. Initially, you don't see much damage, but within two seconds of fighting Dario, he's pretty much dead. <laughs> Even if he goes underground, he will die and pop up. So the build is pretty cool, and I feel like it's like one of those Japanese anim animated cool guys don't look at the explosion, right? <laughs> so yeah, it's a fun build, and you deal tons of damage as you rack up the bleeding and also the rent damage. This could be a very good build if you guys are looking for alternatives against killing bosses or clearing up dungeons. And I do have quite a bit of fun with this one. And I think once we have a chance to test on the leaderboard, this could be a really nice build for the charge barbarians together with Rint. Now I have made a builder's guide for you guys. And in the builder's guide, I do have some additional descriptions about adjusting for unique pet gems and also adjusting for different items, which we have talked about in the previous video. So I even had a link in the previous video. I spent a few minutes to talk about this. We'll still talk about what happens when you don't have Uber Uniques. I'm currently using three Uber Uniques with the helmet, amulet, and also the two-handed sword. So briefly going through the highlight of our build. Because we'll be using rent, our gloves will have plus four ranks to rent, but we'll still retain the charge with four engines, and also we'll still retain charge or kick will make enemies explode. And this is highlight for the build with charging. Now while we're charging, we'll be using the new unique ring, Ring of the Ravenous, which allows us to apply rent onto enemies. 
increasing bonus skill damage, which lowers our cooldowns, and also have tons of other benefits like critical chance, vulnerability, and also bleeding damage increase. Now, similar to most of the charge build, we will be reducing cooldowns as we kill enemies while berserking. And this is great because we always berserk with charge, and after they explode while we berserk, we get tons of cooldown reduction. Now the main theme of the build will still focus on this particular unique sword, which allows us to deal more damage with maximum fury. I have decided to lower my fury a little bit, about 208, and I used to be 260, 280, just because I'm a little greedy on the Paragon board, which I'll explain. So just to show you guys over here, I'm using a maze and also a two-handed, uh, a maze and also one-handed sword. I'll explain why. And similarly for Rin, I'm using a maze and also a one-handed sword. So briefly coming over to the skill trees. The skill trees is quite straightforward. We'll be maxing out in rend. We're also using flay, which I think is okay to get some fury gain and also some additional damage against single target. Majority of the time, you don't need this particular spell against multiple targets simply because charge deals so much damage. We're no longer getting bleeding effects from toughest nail because we are bleeding be alright. So we have a source of bleeding, which is quite important. We'll be getting Fury Gain and also Reduction to Damage while getting Berserk, which allows us to deal more damage single target. We also have Bonus Movement Speed. So over here, we'll be using Wallop, and Wallop will require us to deal more damage using our Bulging Weapon, and a one-handed maze will be perfect for this case. So this means we'll deal 15% more damage to vulnerable enemies, and both our charge and also both our rent will be using a Belgian weapon, which is a one-handed mace in the arsenal system. So it's quite important for you to select the right particular skills. So here you can select your skills and make sure you select the right ones to be benefiting from this additional damage. Now I mentioned I was a little greedy with the Paragon board. So let me show you guys the Paragon board. Actually, it's a little harder to show here. Maybe it's easier to show here. It's because it can be zoomed out. So the Paragon board will actually have how many board? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, I wanted everything for the Paragon board. I am we're still benefiting from a lot of nice, you know, glyphs, and we have six of those with close damage, with bleeding effect, and also with damage, you know, bonus with cooldown reduction, and also with even more damage bonus for healthy and against close enemies. I'm using this this bow, which allows us to have increased bleeding damage and also reduce our cooldowns even further. So no ultimate spell's cooldowns will be reduced by one second when we kill bleeding enemies, which is great for the build. I'm also perking into this legendary effect, which allows us to deal more bleeding damage while going with vulnerable damage. So this is a multiplier. I didn't get the best gears for vulnerability, and here I'll show you guys what my multiplication are. At the moment, I'm getting about 26% increased bleeding damage because of my vulnerability damage. I could get this even higher, maybe to six, maybe to 30 or 40%, but my gears are not perfect for vulnerability damage. So you can see my two-handed weapon is getting vulnerability damage, and also my one-handed mace was not was not getting vulnerability damage. But here we got some vulnerability damage, and in the paragon tree we also got some vulnerability damage and also damage reductions over here. Now, because you guys can see the Paragon board, I'll leave the builder's guide for you guys to have a look and you can go through the details over here. So coming over to a short skill rotation, similar to most of the charge build, you actually don't have any problems in tier 100 and tier 100 becomes like a super easy, like walk in the park for you. As long as you charge into enemies, even more than one, you'll be having cooldown reduction. And because we're using the Martial Glyph and also Disembowelment, which lowers our cooldowns, you have multiple ways to lower your cooldowns. And all your shots gets lower cooldown, and all of your, you know, boarding skill gets multiple dips of lower cooldown. So this is an incredibly speedy build against multiple enemies and, and against tier 100. As long as you charge into enemies, you have no problem. Most of the time, the only problem is single target. And facing single target, I'll go through the Dora rotation as well. So charge it around and have a few of the build. And you got to see my shout cooldown go down very quickly. Simply because as we kill enemies, we'll be lowering this cooldown with 10% chance by one second each time we kill one enemy. And it's incredibly good. So yeah, the cooldowns of the charge skill is really, really low. And also the cooldowns for the shouts gets even lower. 
Now, similar to most of the Berserker build, over here we'll be using Wrath of Berserker should you feel you want to deal some more damage. And after that, simply spending some fury and also basic attacking a few times will increase the damage and also extend the durations of a Wrath of Berserker. But that is not really needed against most elites because they melt super fast. So coming over to a fight for Doriel, and also for any of the single target boss. Well, right away, you do want to deal more single target damage. And earlier I mentioned that I had some replacement for the gears. So this is my setup if I'm going for multiple targets and so tier 100, I'm using those two rings. And on the other side, if I'm going for Dory or single target boss, I can switch out of those two rings because the previous two over here, they're for multiple targets, right? And if you go for the Ring of Starless and also the x Syncret, this allows you to deal multiple ways of single target damage and tons of damage because of the rent build. So starting with Doriel, you're going to Berserk and start applying rent to the boss. And as you can see, I'm constantly using charge to gain more fury and also gain more duration of Berserk. And this allows us to do more damage because we become unstoppable. So the rotation is quite simple. You apply rent as you have maximum fury because having maximum fury makes you deal even more damage and the, the bleeding effect really stacks up and because you can be critical hitting with your bleeding from the key passive you actually deal tons of more damage with the grandfather encrypted now i often get a question hey matt what if you don't have any of the uber uniques well for this case you can replace a helmet with the berserking helmet or any of the defensive helmet should you feel yourself a little weaker this is the old basic attack helmet, so you don't really need basic attack stats on it. Just look at the legendary effect. You can also replace the grandfather, which is a two-handed weapon that gives you even more core skill damage by 60%. And finally, for the amulet, you can still have a defensive element, like the one we have over here that increases armor, or you can have something that increases damage while having a barrier that deals even more damage. Now, for more details of replacing Uber Uniques, come over to this video and around the time mark of 340, this will be available as I go into more details about replacing those items.
but if you guys haven't subscribed, it is a really good time to do so, because I'll be covering tons of Diablo 4 related topics and also videos and also guides. We'll be looking to the top meta builds, non-meta builds, leveling up, and also Paragon tricks. We'll also look into the latest events and also official updates, and also changes to different characters and also different builds in the game. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn the notification on, because a lot of you who are watching the videos have not subscribed. You can see 80% of the viewers who are watching our videos have not subscribed, so make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for the latest update for Diablo 4.